Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a fun and very classic TFL mashup. We've got two very different vehicles. We've got a pickup truck versus, well, a crossover SUV. But think of it this way. We've got the brutish American versus the refined Brit. And which one of these two is gonna have an easier time going up Cliffhanger 2.0? Well, only one way to find out, and that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Truck. Often going off-road is all about the tire and, well, we've got an interesting TFL mashup. We've basically got the old version and the new version of the BFGs here. These are the KO2s, these are the originals. These have 30,000 miles on them. These have, well, they look like they're brand new. So, point Range Rover, at least in terms of which one has better tires. But you know what? I think we're gonna air down both vehicles to give us a little bit more grip. So I'm gonna air these down to about 18 PSI. You could go lower, but if you go too low, you risk popping the bead. Um, the other problem is, of course, you lose ground clearance the lower you go because the tire gets flatter. But the upside is you get a lot more grip and uh, actually a cushier ride. I felt really bad this winter when I got that Ranger Rover Sport stuck, so I wanted to show what it can do with a proper set of tires. In fact, they're more proper than the Raptors. The Raptor has 37,000 miles on these KOs, and that's a lot of miles for a set of very off-road worthy tires. Now there's a lot of other differences too. Obviously I've got a mechanically rock locking rear diff, which means it's always locked. Um, and I have a solid rear axle, which is better for off-roading, I believe, because it means I'm not going to get as much wheel air time, hang time let's call it, as an independent suspension might do. Now believe it or not, that Range Rover actually has a lot more horsepower than this American V8. But that's not what counts, it's about torque and about the all-wheel drive system, or in this case, the four-wheel drive system, a classic American four-wheel drive pickup. In other words, a transfer case that takes all that torque of this V8 and delivers it to the wheels, plus a solid rear axle, which means that the rear tires stay on the ground and, of course, a locking rear diff. Uh, there are disadvantages. The Raptor's a lot longer, so the approach angle is probably similar, but the breakover angle, you know, the angle at which it teeter-totters, is a lot lower, so it can potentially get hung up a little bit more. But I do have more underbody cladding which is good. So Alex here was kind enough to bring his personal Range Rover Sport to show us what this vehicle is capable of. Tell me, why did you decide to lift it? Nobody lifts these things. Well, I really just wanted to use the car, what it was built for, yeah. and you see so many of these things just being wasted, driven to the mall and back, parked out at the valet parking lots, and I really wanted to show what this car was capable of. Yeah, 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 and was it hard to find? I mean, obviously it's easy to find parts and bits, off-road worthy parts and bits for Jeeps, but how about for a Range Rover? Because, you know, Range Rover will tell you that the third owner or seven years is when these first go off-road, and this is a 2015, so you are breaking that mold, my friend. Well, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It kind of makes me sound a little crazy, but uh, you know, surprisingly, obviously there's a hardcore Land Rover culture and there's a few of us in the Range Rover and Range Rover sport world that actually want to use our rigs for what they're built for. So believe it or not, there's a small community, but we've found a way to find the parts that we need to make these things even more capable than they already are. And then we can also put it into sand mode or especially today, if things start getting hairy, we'll put it into rock crawl mode. The other cool thing is right here it shows you that the center differential right there is locked and the rear differential is open right now and this will be dynamic this will change based on the conditions of the trail yeah and you know it wasn't fair we got the other one stuck it had the tires that it came with it wasn't fair to the vehicle so i'm, I'm really grateful you brought this to actually show our viewers what these can do are you at all nervous about the cliffhanger seeing it for the first time not at all i've seen what this car is capable of with stock tires and stock suspension so I'm really looking forward to see how it does with a couple extra goodies on it. All right, so if you hear like uh, like scary crunching and metal on rock, that's not gonna bother you? All right, touche, <laughs> you, you got me on that one. The only thing that scares me here is crunching and scraping. 
But at the end of the day, uh, hopefully the bigger tires and extra clearance will come in handy. Yeah, I mean, we did the math, right? And that one has, what, you think about 11, almost 12 inches. Actually, probably between 12 and 13 inches of ground clearance, which you can't quite tell here because of the angle that we're parked at. But uh, yeah, it's got a fair amount of clearance. Yeah, you've got three inches on me. <laughs> That was easy. I'm watching this thing. You've got tons of ground clearance. There was no point in time where you were even close to being stuck. Well, that's good to hear because these big rocks are definitely daunting in terms of, I see each one with a dollar sign on it. But at the end of the day, the car really did the work and made me look like a pro. Yeah, those air down KO2s are doing great. And the added lift is really paying benefits. This refined Brit actually brings a lot of tech to the table. Not only does it have an inch and a half lift, and air suspension, which allows it to have more ground clearance than that Raptor. It also has a terrain management system that knows where to allocate power when the going gets rough, and it's gonna get rough. Plus, it has a locking center differential and an electronic locking rear differential. So there's a lot of tech that's going on. So we've come to a fork in the road and the left side's a little bit harder but the right side is just as hard and it's hard to show just how steep this is but even walking this hill is very difficult. Loose rocks, loose dirt, very steep. It's amazing what modern vehicles can do. I hate to say this but I think you may have a little bit of an advantage at uh, two or three inches of extra ground clearance is huge. Oh, he's struggling a little bit too. There you go. Keep a little momentum up. You gotta keep momentum. Uh oh, looks like he's stuck. <laughs> there he goes. There we go. There we go. Use momentum. Oh, heading to the ground. Come on, get momentum. There we go. There we go. There we go. Working hard. But this little bit of momentum carries the day. Air down and I'm stuck. I'm gonna go get a little bit of momentum. Come on, Raptor, come on. Yeah, hit the bottom. But I made it. So Alex, here's the trickiest part of the entire cliffhanger. We call this the razor bend, right? Because this is like a razor and it will cleanly cut the bottom of your very expensive Range Rover in half. So I noticed that you were kind of struggling at times. Like what was the train management system doing? I think the train management is extremely active and yeah. uh, you know the, the biggest struggle for me was finding figuring out how to work with the train management. It's really a system that wants you to work with it and there's a couple of tricks to it. So many times where it felt like you were stuck, it was cutting fuel and whatnot. And so it was really about letting off the gas and giving it another try and then it would keep moving forward. But uh, so, so you felt like it was trying to do stuff that you didn't want it to do in some ways, right? It would cut power and you were like, hey, go and you yeah, go. yeah, absolutely. And so I think right now, this is my first time doing hardcore off-roading in the car. Yep. And so right now, this is just as much about figuring out how to get up this trail as it is about figuring out how to work with my car. But with some time, I think she and I will figure out how to work with each other. <laughs> all right, well, let's, let's go up the uh, razor bend and just be careful, all right? So really, it's about taking the right line and just being smooth and steady. Keeping on the power and letting the truck do the work. My fingers out of the steering wheel just in case. Here's a razor bend. Come on, Raptor, yes! No metal on rock. And that is the right line. I hope that uh, Alex has similar luck with his Range Rover.
British America or refined Britain. You know, they're both at the top of the cliffhanger and they both did it in two very different ways. This was just about old school, raw, four wheel drive. And that was about a much more sophisticated and yet just as capable off-road terrain management system. Really what it comes down to is, in my book, something much simpler than that. How willing are you to do trail damage? And with a two-year-old, actually a three-year-old Raptor, I'm probably a little bit more willing to do trail damage than Alex is in his brand new Range Rover Sport. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, look at this, top of the world cliffhanger reviews. See you next time. Ciao. Welcome to about two miles above sea level, high in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. And this is Cliffhanger 2.0, TFL's new test of ultimate off-road worthiness. Why is it so hard? Well, look at it for yourselves. It's steep, it's deep. It's loose and it's rocky, and we're going to take some of the most off-road vehicles we can get our hands on up the cliffhanger to see how capable they are. Check it out for yourself. It's most certainly a Jeep thing, or is it a Goldilocks thing? You'll get that reference by the end of this video. Today, I have brought what is perhaps one of the most off-road capable vehicles that you can buy. It's the Wrangler Rubicon Hard Rock Edition, and this has all the bits and pieces that you'd want to go up Cliffhanger 2.0, but first I need some help. Now I brought the 2016 Jeep Renegade Trailhawk to this comparison. Did I bring a knife to a gunfight? I have pretty good confidence. Now unlike Andre's little Fiat over here, I'm very certain that this 2016 Jeep Wrangler Sport S will make it up Cliffhanger 2.0. 